What's up guys, we're back with another Bandai Tamashii Nation's SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z review. Taking a look at a P Bandai release that, well, it's been delayed and it's finally here, but it's one of the ones that I have really been looking forward to for, for this entire year, so I'm glad he he's finally made it. So of course we're taking a look at Final Form Cooler. So we've gotten a handful of freezes over the years. It's nice to finally get some more members of the family. So we've of course got him here in standard Dragon Ball Z style figure arts packaging. So you've got the figure there in the window. It's kind of an oversized package because he is so big. Uh, you've got that cutout with a shot of him on the front that wraps around to the side with a ton of product shots showcasing how he moves and some of the stuff he comes with on the back. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go out of the package, our figure arts cooler. Again, one that I have just really been looking forward to. And, and one that I'm really glad to finally have in the line. He may not be like the most important, you know, he he's not integral to, to the overarching storyline of Dragon Ball Z, really, but this is a cool looking figure. Like that's really what it comes down to. I think he's an awesome design. I really dig the whole Frieza race uh, design aesthetic, especially as we go through forms. You know, this is more in line with, say, like, Frieza's Form 2 in many respects, like, coupled with kind of Form 4, but this is a really awesome design, and I would love to get more of this kind of stuff uh, in the line. I'd love to get all of Frieza's forms, King Cold, you know, really give it all to me. Everything that you want, just throw it at me, but I'm really happy that we finally have this guy, and I think he lives up to my expectations, honestly. There's a lot of cool stuff, no, no pun intended, uh, going on here. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. Uh, we've got a head that can look up. Pretty good, really. Uh, there's not a whole lot in the way on this guy, and like he can look down to a ridiculous degree, which is, is pretty fantastic. Uh, there's not a lot of tilt on him because he's got kind of a wide neck, but you do have full rotation. Kind of, kind of squeaky, not not too tight, just kind of squeaky there. We've got arms that go way out. They, of course, will rotate. There is a butterfly joint in there, and it will expose our shoulder pads. So these have this little pin here. I'm, I think it's kind of unsightly, not the biggest fan of it, but uh, you can hide it. It does move as well. You've got your bicep swivel. We've got double jointed uh, elbows there, and they go back pretty far. He does have uh, really big, thick arms. I mean, look at him, so it's not unexpected but he still has good range. And we've got ball hinges at the wrist, so normal stuff there. Hinge him in any direction, just move that ball. At the torso, he goes backwards and forward, tilt side to side, and then it's also full rotation at that diaphragm cut. And then as far as the actual waist itself, he can go forward that far coupled with that diaphragm. So it does help quite a bit. Uh, it helps quite a bit going backwards also. And then of course it does add a little bit to your tilt, and then you've got some rotation down in there. It's not full, but coupled with the diaphragm, it works really well. He does have an articulated tail back here. So it swivels at the base and then it hinges. And of course you can move it in any direction. So the ball socket will move and then the actual tail will move too. So it's technically two spots. So it can move in and out, up and down and all around. And then it's also got another hinging rotating point uh, at the back. So you do have a lot of movement with the tail. Uh, I think it looks really, really good uh, like that, honestly. It doesn't throw him off balance too much. It does, of course, put a little weight on the backside, but so far, I've not really had any problems with it. Legs go out, not full splits, but, but pretty good. They kick forward all the way. Kicks backward a little bit. You do have your thigh cut. We've got double jointed knees, and just like the elbows, you know, they're thick. So of course, they do, they do limit him a little bit, but it's not too bad. And then we've got ankle rotation. You do have some rocker down here. It's not a ton. He's got big wide feet. So he does have a little bit. And then he does have really, really good hinges. So, I mean, overall, I'm very happy with this guy in terms of how he moves. He, he honestly moves a little bit better than I thought he would. I purposely kind of avoided reviews on this guy just to kind of experience him for myself. And I, and I am really happy with the way he turned out. I think he moves nicely. He's very much a figure arts figure. Like, there's not a whole lot to be unexpected with this guy. I think he moves very much in line with what you think a figure arts uh, Dragon Ball Z character is going to move. He just happens to be a lot bigger, and he's not a bigger character covered in uh, Saiyan armor by comparison. He's just different, but still very similar. Of course, aesthetically, I do think he's pretty awesome, and, and I'm very happy with the way he looks. There might be one thing 
that, that some folks I expect will have some criticisms on. And I know I've seen folks already, you know, because this guy's been out in Japan for a while, have already gone to lengths to fix or quote-unquote fix some things. But I think for the most part, I think he looks pretty fantastic. The one big thing that immediately jumps out is something that maybe they could have done, but kind of would set him apart from the rest of the line, is to fill in all of this armor etching and the stuff that looks like nicks or gouges on him. Because it would lend him to a very animated style. I don't know if I really care about that. Uh, the light picks him up pretty fine for me, so I'm not a you know a big uh, detractor when it comes to that. But I've also seen folks fill all this stuff in with with like a Gundam marker or just regular old black wash, and it does look really good. So your mileage may vary on whether or not you truly care about that. I am happy to report that he is otherwise covered in a ton of shading. Like all of the musculature does have this uh, sort of sort of deep deep purple shading to it. So of course he is very like you know grape looking underneath that that white plating and he has a lot of shading you know in all the musculature uh, at the thighs and on the arms and on the abs so there is a lot of shading there to bring it out i wasn't really sure if this was going to have it or not i was kind of concerned uh, that he would have fallen i think a little flat if he didn't have that but it does add to the figure it gives him a little bit more depth and just makes him look a little bit beefier when you can readily see the definition in all of those muscles and i think he looks uh, i think he looks great there's a lot of different textures and and finishes here so his armor the plating is a very matte finish but you've got all of these like jewel adornment kind of things on him that are really really shiny by comparison coupled with the the different colors from the purple to that super dark purple on the shading You've got this humongous head sculpt up here, which I think, I mean, is one of the defining characteristics of this guy because he, of course, has, like, the face mask on, those deep red eyes with just those little lines that run, run across his mouth. It makes him look super evil and incredibly imposing, not to mention the fact that the head uh, is really large with these huge fins that come off the back. He's got the spikes on the arms and the back, and these are actually pretty pointy. I would urge maybe a little caution with them. I could see somebody knocking this over and, like, this you know, breaking or nicking at the end. So maybe just be a little careful with those. They are also slightly uncomfortable if you push too hard. So it's not for kiddos. And then of course he does have, again, this massive, massive tail. It's really big, it's huge, and, and it looks really good. There's not a whole lot to say about it. It's a tail. I think it's appropriately sized. It's got a little bit of paint on it, of course, for the spike tip down there. But I think he's a pretty stellar looking figure. I'm very happy with the way he turned out. Uh, he's going to make a great addition to a shelf with uh, with whatever Frieza you want to throw him with or have him tackling the Saiyans. But I'm pretty happy with, with the presentation on the sculpt, paint, sizing. I'll do some size comparisons here shortly as well. Uh, but this is a pretty, pretty stellar looking figure just right out of the box. And then as far as size comparisons go, let's start with some figure arts. So we've got uh, a Vegito here on the left, and you can see that Cooler absolutely towers over him. But then we've got first form Frieza over here on the right, and I mean, there's, there's beyond no comparison. Not that there's supposed to be. I mean, he, this is final form Cooler. This is, of course, you know, first form Frieza, so it makes perfect sense that he would be a lot bigger. But it gives you a really good idea of just how big uh, this guy is. He's not the biggest figure arts in the Dragon Ball line, but he is definitely up there. Uh, now, as far as some other lines, here he is with a Marvel Legends. So here he is with the with the High Evolutionary. Uh, let's move Frieza aside. Here he is with a Neca Turtle. So there's Raphael to give you an idea of what he looks like with a few other lines. And then for for a line that is a little bit larger than both of these, uh, let's use a, a Masterverse figure. So here he is with uh, Masterverse Stinkor, and you can see that Stinkor is pretty close. I mean, outside of the big points on his head. Uh, you, you can see that they pretty much line up. Now, they wouldn't necessarily be in scale with each other, but it gives you an idea of exactly how big, since this is a 7-inch line uh, compared to a more traditional 6-inch, 112-ish line. Now, as far as accessories goes, Cooler does have a pretty solid amount. He is, however, and I'll say it up front, he's missing the one thing that I always want to see with every Dragon Ball figure arts. He is he's missing an effect part. Uh, and it's just, the, it's just the thing that I always want. Like, there's never not going to be an instance where I don't want an effect part. So, when we don't get him, I am always a little bit bummed. But he does have, I mean, a decent amount of stuff here. The f first is, of course, he does have the extra head. Uh, so, in this case, you pop the head off and replace it. And then you put the, the so-called, you know, crown back on here. And, of course, it's the head that has uh, the exposed mouth. So, he's got a little bit of a smirk. You can see those red eyes again, and then of course you can see that purple mouth, or, or rather the face underneath all of that. So instead of having like the mask, it's just his exposed face, which makes perfect sense as far as an, an alternate head sculpt goes. So I'm really happy with this. 
Uh, it does look really good. Very easy to, to swap out also, no real issues uh, to be had there. And then as far as the rest of his, his accessories, he has some hands. Uh, so we get a set of kind of style pose gripping hands. We get a set of uh, pointing finger hands. And then we get a set of open palm, but still style posey kind of hands. And then lastly, he also includes a set of uh, more gripping or loose style feet. So like if you've got him hoisted in the air, you know, his toes would be kind of dangling down rather than being flat out. So you've got those, or if you want to pose him on like a, like a rocky surface or pose him with one foot up on something, uh, he can be kind of lurching forward like that. So you get, you know, two of everything I just showed you, and then you also get the extra head sculpt. So he does have a decent amount of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of options here as far as posing and to make him more dynamic. But again, an effect part. Always want more effect parts. He just doesn't have one. So yeah, overall, really happy with this guy. The only the only real thing that, that I wish he had was an effect part. I said that enough. Uh, I wish all Dragon Ball Z figure arts that could use them came with them, but they don't. So here we are. He does, however, look fantastic. I think he moves incredibly well. I like the sizing on him. I just love everything about this figure for the most part, really. Uh, he looks fantastic and his design lends itself to being a very fun, very engaging, very exciting action figure. And I think Bandai did a really solid job on this one. Very happy to finally add him to the collection. He's gonna look really good alongside his brother or bashing some Saiyans or whatever you're gonna do with him. Uh, this is definitely not one to have missed. So that's gonna do it for this look at the Bandai Tamashii Nation's SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z Cooler. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.